Hi everyone and welcome along. Today we're painting one of my favourite spring flowers, the pansy, because it, it was made to be painted in watercolour, quite frankly. So grab your paints and let's get started. So we're going to paint pansies and I'm going to do a, it's going to be like a sort of controlled loose style, I suppose. So I'm going to draw a stem with one, we'll have one up here and we will have maybe a bud coming off there. And I've really enjoyed sort of playing around with the colours and um, practising different styles of pansy because there are just so many different colour combinations you could go for. Um, I was rather keen to do a sort of bluey, bluey, violety sort of indigo set for you today. So I'm just sort of getting a bit of the cobalt blue mixed up. Now we're going to start with the flowers themselves and the good idea is to begin with a little circle but instead of starting it right here I'm going to begin it a little bit further out because my petals are quite translucent and actually no, I can yeah I'll start it there and we begin with the petal sort of towards the back of our pansy. So up here I'm going to paint in a very sort of quite translucent little sort of fan shape. Like that. And then with a bit of water on my brush I'm going to fill that in. making sure that I soften any sort of harsh outline edge and I'll just let that dry and then I can do this one down here so yes this is a sort of fan shape a sort of scallop shell shape but it's very delicate at this point because with a translucent Sort of layered up technique we really need to make sure that we begin nice and delicate um, now we're also going to do a sort of a, a bud semi opening flower version so what I'm going to do I'm just going to sort of step into the future one moment and get a bit of cobalt violet involved and mix that in with my cobalt blue Cobalt Violet is a very sort of delicate, gentle purple colour that you need quite a bit to sort of really make it stand out. There we go. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pop in a few brush strokes like this and drop in a bit of that purple. And all will be revealed later on. So this project is quite a lot to do with waiting for layers to dry. So these have to be crisp and bone dry before we do our next one. Now to add our second petal of the five petal flower. So this one is really going to overlap over that first one we've done and still nice and translucent but this time I've, I've made it just a tiny bit stronger and I'm also going to add in a little bit of an edge with my purple blue mix and I've just done that just by outlining it now if we don't want too much of a sort of bloom into the edges there we can just sort of remove some of that colour. So let's do it again. We've got our petal down here, so another fan shape overlapping. And this is just one type. Well, we're going to do two sort of slight variations on the same theme with these two pansies. But if you are, well, 
if you happen upon a, a few pansies in a garden or have a look online, you will be amazed at the variation there is out there. There we go, and I'll just clean my brush off, dry it off, and just remove a little bit of that colour. Lovely. So what's going to happen next is we're going to add a sort of central petal towards the base, and then there'll be two little wing petals there. But you always sort of have this, um, these two kind of overlapping ones at the top. Now, the central lower petal here is the one where it really sort of is the, the main event. So I'm going to do one up here first, and this one I'm going to have my, my pale blue um, to start off with. It's, got, it's still got to be really, really delicate and translucent, and it is still this fan shape coming out of that central circle. And I'm going to add in some cobalt purple and blue mix. In fact, I'm going to mix some more sort of on camera for you because otherwise it's a bit hard to see what I'm doing then. There we go. So whilst this edge is still wet, we're going to dab in some, but I'm dabbing in a bit more than I did of the layer on the second petal. And what's lovely is I'm just getting a soft blend. I'm not getting it so it's traveling too far on the inside edge, but I'm getting a lovely crisp finish on the outside. And what can be quite nice is maybe getting a bit more of that concentrated cobalt violet and just adding a bit more of a crisp edge with it because they do have these slightly frilled edges of the petals. The other really important thing is you get an amazing dot of yellow, almost like a sort of egg yolk in the middle of the flower on that central petal. So with a dot of cadmium yellow, quite concentrated, I'm going to pop that in and we've waited enough time that it's not going to sort of blend down in too much, which is what we want. And we're going to let that dry and settle in. <laughs> For my next petal on here, we're going to do a slightly different technique. I am going to paint in my blue. So fanning out from the center. Being very sparing with the amount of water I'm using here. And this time I'm going to allow that yellow to go on whilst that is still wet. And I'm going to pulse it out and it's become a, going to become more of a sort of key part of the design of this petal. I'm going to bring in some of that purple and I'm going to sort of send it up the middle like that. So this one has got a sort of more of a, a soft blend, I suppose, of the two colours. Now what's cool now is I have got the sort of stopping point of where my stem is going to come so I can start to get the stem mix mixed up and pop in some leaves and get her some sepals on that bud. So I've got sap green and green gold down here mixing together to make a lovely fresh green stem. If you didn't have green gold, 
Just a, a little bit of cadmium yellow in with your sap green would do the same. And I'm going to take my three tenths brush and I'm going to start to paint in my stem. So I'm just going to move this over a fraction so I've got a bit more room for my hand. And I'm going to start from where the stem meets the flower. And it's quite a slender stem. And I quite like the idea of painting these sort of two parallel lines coming down to begin with. Now, the stem and the leaves of a pansy. So we do have little sort of growths just happening either side there. But they've got these lovely, long, sort of slightly sort of textured leaves that grow off either side. So we can pop in a few just with a size four pointed round brush. So with that, I have managed to sort of create a nice central line by just using some unpainted space, which is quite fun. Now I'm not going to get too involved on the stem on this side because we're still filling in space with our petals, but what I can do is begin to sort of fill out a little bit more as we go down the stem. Now if you've got a bit more confidence, a bit more control with the brush, you can use a, a broader brush to paint in your stem as well as your leaves. But there's no shame in opting for a smaller brush whilst you're, especially whilst you're learning. I like to do a bit of both. So I'm gonna pop in a sort of branch with a, another bud I think that would be quite fun because we can show you twice how the so the flower of a pansy grows on the stem because it, it sort of sits and hooks over the stem. And then you have some quite involved sepals that sort of come down like a little cap over the top. So I do think it's important to have your petals painted in and dried before you do add those sepals on top. So I will do just that. And I'm gonna change my water because it's very green now. And when you're still painting really delicate colors, you do want to keep your water nice and untainted. Okay, we've given our flowers a nice bit of drying time up there. So now we can get on with the last two petals either side of the center, and then we can do some detail. So that's really fun. And what's nice is we can really start to see the pansy come to life. So up here, we're going to do two side petals, and they're gonna come up quite high and these ones are actually going to stop and sit in behind the central petal and the reason that I don't do the sort of translucent finish of layering up that I've done with all the others is because we're starting to get a bit of detail on that central lowest petal and it really is the one that wants to be as uninterrupted as possible. We've got that blue and I'm going to edge it with a little bit of purple. And 
and I'm just going to bring that purple in a little bit more than the one up there. And then we do it on the other side. Same thing. And then all of a sudden, we've got something that looks a little bit familiar. So it's really important not to disturb that yellow. And then also if you need to just even up the shape if you think it's not quite right, you can just do that quite nicely there. And that is a really fantastic pansy shape. The top has always got these sort of two rather uneven petals. The middle is where you get more symmetry and then the bottom, that nice central piece. And this one, in the same way that we did a slightly different shape of purple edging, we're going to do the same thing here. So just bring it in a little bit more there. So they're subtle differences, but they're worth noting because they do make quite a different finish. And it's also worth saying that yellow has bled down so perfectly and the reason it's done it in a lovely even manner is because we did not have too much water on the page we just had a really sort of quite controlled amount the page was not sopping wet and in the same way that these purples are going really beautifully on it's because we've not got too much water, we've just got the right amount. And that sounds a bit cryptic and a bit frustrating if you're, <laughs> if you're still learning, but essentially what you want is to have a sort of light coating of water, not too much, certainly not puddling on the page. Anyway, let's get back on with some leaves. So I'm gonna bring back in my green water because this, although very green, it works perfectly for the purpose. Okay, so some more leaves. If leaves are something you are a little bit sort of nervous of doing, I highly recommend having a look at my sort of introduction to leaf painting, which is in my watercolour, uh, in my flowers and foliage um, playlist, which is the, the same playlist that you're finding this one here today. So it's right back at the beginning. We've got so many videos now. So we'll do a slightly sort of chunky stem towards the bottom. And then we can pop in our sepals. Let's check that's dry, lovely. Very nice. So we just need everything to dry fully now to add some lovely detail in here and to get our last stem on. I've mixed up a really sort of dark concentrated mix of cobalt blue, a bit of Mars black and a bit of the cobalt violet. And it's got this beautiful inky color which I'm going to use now to add in the detail on the petal and I've got a bit of fluff on my brush so I'll remove that. Using a 3 tenths brush I'm going to begin by doing these little brush strokes that follow the sort of direction of the petal and just sort of overlap on the yellow. It's all nice and dry 
which is what we want. And this central line is still really helpful to me because what I want is the colour to sort of flood out into the petal in a, a two, in sort of two halves. So I want it to sort of come up a little bit and then come out like that. Now when I was practicing, I experimented with doing this with a sort of a loose blend and I felt that it just sort of lost a bit of the impact. It didn't quite do what I wanted it to do. However, once I've done this strong colour, if I clean my brush off, I can just sort of soften the shape out a little bit and get it just with a slightly more translucent sort of edge to it because we're going to add a little bit more. And we're going to also add a little bit in to our side petals. Now notice that I've not butted up completely to the central circle there. I'll just turn the page a little bit so I can get round there. And now, with my even smaller brush, which is a size 5 tenths, I'm now going to add in some really long sort of tendrils of this colour. Nice fine lines. And in doing so, I can also help sort of shape the direction of the detail on this petal. And we add a few Now, we've also got this one down here, which we can use a slightly different approach, but still using this strong colour. Some pansies, you don't get that solid dark colour, but you do get these sort of lovely dashes of colour that radiate from that centre. So they're not just random, but notice how I'm, I'm sort of purposefully making them in perfect lines that they thicken and then they fine out and that's just by starting using a bit more of the belly of the brush and then getting the slender tip and then we have a few on the side as well Let's turn that round And those are looking really lovely. We've got a tiny bit more detail left for those, but let's finish off our stems. So stem mix, we can go right up to the edge of this now because we know, we know where we're at. And I also think it might be nice to just sort of keep, 
keep our stem going down the page because we're all quite high up, aren't we? And because these grow, sort of, sounds strange thing to say, these grow as plants, but the, they sort of cluster together, you get lots on a stem, we could give the sense that there's plenty more growth that's going to be happening on this one. And with my slightly smaller brush, I will just use the sap green on its own for a little bit of detail on the leaves. But as I said, this is a controlled loose style, which I really love. That was what a few of my subscribers have coined that phrase for me, which I'm very grateful to you for because it, it, you've got it absolutely spot on. That That is very much what I do. I'm not a botanical artist in the traditional sense. I'm a flower painter, but I paint in what I call a new botanical style, which is very much paying homage and respect to those incredibly detailed styles, but with the loose loose approach. So if I get my clean water one last time, all I want to do is just add a tiny weeny bit of shadow to the centre of that um, centre of that flower, just so we can see where the petals are sitting with each other. So I'm just mixing up, they've got sort of dregs of shadowy stuff up here. Greens, blues, blacks, that kind of thing. And we go with caution. Don't want to muddy that yellow too much, but that's all we need really. And a little bit coming down the center. Again with this one, do a little bit just so it helps you see where everything is. And there we have some lovely spring pansies. Thanks so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed that one as much as I did. And I want to say a big thank you to my patrons for your support because that support enables me to keep creating these videos that everyone can enjoy. And if you enjoyed it, then hit the like button and comment below to let me know how you're getting on. And of course, if you subscribe, then you'll never miss another video. Okay, until next time, bye.